welcome to the first episode of The Downtown Dish. I am your host, Katie Schamberger. I think I have some friendly faces out there in the crowd, but I have made a career of writing about Kansas City and am a former nine-year resident of the River Market. So downtown is right here in my heart. So I'm really thrilled to be here today. It's a momentous day. There's a reason that we picked today to launch the downtown dish. And that's because as you probably know, today is the day when our downtown restaurants and re retailers start that reopening process. So we're gonna celebrate and we're gonna give you all kinds of news and info. And you're gonna be hearing from three guests today. I'm so excited to have them. We will hear from Sue Patterson, Director of Marketing and Events at the City Market. We'll hear from Barry Tunnel, who is the general manager of Tannen Wine Bar and Kitchen. And we're gonna hear from Danielle Lehman, who is the founder of curbsidekc.com, which is my new go-to resource. And I think if you're not already using it, you will be after we talk to her. So uh, as you guys know, this is a lunchtime chat. So use that chat function, let us know uh, what you're eating. Maybe you've got some good downtown carry out. I have some hot crab dip from Tannen waiting for me. And yes, I do. I have some wine for after the show, after the show. And a cocktail also from Tannen, right? So fun. Also for after the show. So throughout the show, we are going to have interviews, but we're also going to be giving you lots of scoop on some cool stuff that is happening downtown. So the first thing that we want to put on your radar, and I need to be advancing my slides. Sorry, guys, let's back up for just a sec. Here's a quick slide. We're going to show this to you again at the end. Um, this is going to be a weekly event, 12 to 1245 every Friday. Sign up on Eventbrite just like you did for today, and you'll get that link. Uh, you are automatically on mute, but again, use that chat function to say hi and to ask questions. We're going to be answering questions throughout the show today. And then, this is really cool, we are going to be posting a recap blog after every show. Uh, you'll have the video embedded and we'll link to everything that we've talked about. So. Um, you know, lots of stuff for you to check out and see and do. So you'll have all that right in one place. And then if you want to share that with your friends and neighbors and colleagues, we would greatly appreciate that. So that is going to be up on the downtown council's website. And we've got the link there, downtownkc.org slash news. And if you want to share on social, you know, we have a hashtag, hashtag downtown dish KC. Let's get the conversation going. Big thanks before we really dive in. These amazing partners made this show happen and I could not be more honored to uh, participate as host. So thank you guys so much. Okay, downtown scoop number one, Lifted Spirits, one of my favorite distilleries, they have launched a really cool guest bartender series. So every week they're gonna team up with the local bar they're gonna offer cocktail kits from that bar that you can order to, uh, for carry out or for delivery. And next week, I wanna put this on your radar, it's gonna be a double downtown partnership because they're gonna team up with Extra Virgin. So sales open on Tuesdays, so Tuesday, May 19th. If you wanna keep an eye on their website, that is liftedspiritskc.com. You can, of course, order order their products as well. But I think this is a really cool partnership and they're doing some Instagram live where they're actually, you know, walking you through making the cocktails. Um, Danielle may be able to chat with us a little bit about that later on in the show. And without further ado, I am so thrilled to welcome our first guest, the amazing Sue Patterson, City Market Sue. Uh, Director of Marketing and Events at the City Market. Sue, how are you? I'm great. How are you? This is fantastic. I'm really happy to be on here today. The, the, the pilot. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, oh, the nerves. No, it's great. It's fun. Um, <laughs> well, we are so excited, and I know that we've got a lot to talk about, but I wanted to chat with you first because I think that when people think of the City Market, they, they automatically think of the farmer's market, as you should. 
but so many wonderful shops, both restaurants and retailers, right there in the perimeter of the neighborhood. So, Sue, from your firsthand perspective, how have they been adapting recently, and, and what are some of the things that they have going on? You know, it's really important to let everyone know. It's amazing how many people don't know that City Market is open daily. There's something going on at City Market every day of the week. You know, the farmer's market is the weekend thing, but we have shops and restaurants and specialty grocers that are there seven days a week. During the lockdown, our retail shops were not food oriented. They were not considered essential. So they were closed temporarily. There's a handful of those and I'll touch on how they're re-emerging in a moment. But all of our restaurants with the exception of maybe two um, remained open the entire time and they're still open and they're still adapting. So, you know, they're all very small businesses and they're figuring it out. Um, okay. as we go, but they're offering all kinds of interesting, um, you know, products and adaptations. They've got meal kits going on. They've got curbside deliveries and takeout and you name it. They are, you know, figuring it out how mm -hmm. to serve their customers. So, and some personal, personal shopping by appointment too, right? For some of the boutiques, I think. Yeah, so our on. retail shops are, are kind of adapting. A lot of them have reconfigured. They're, you know, putting barriers around their cash wraps and so forth. Everybody's doing something different because everyone has a different product offering. So for example, Hawthorne 109, our women's boutique, which is a really fun shop, really affordable, lots of great stuff. Um, they are doing shop by appointment. So it's personal mm -hmm. shopping. And when you go there, she's got it set up so that, you, you know, you've got the store to yourself and then you get a special summer t-shirt that's waiting for you in your, in your dressing room and that kind of thing. So we're- That is so cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is amazing. That is wonderful to hear. And I know that if I, if I, I hope that I'm correct here, but I believe that the farmer's market has been open in a limited capacity recently, but I know this is a tremendous weekend. And so if you can share specifically what is happening with that gorgeous farmer's market, one of the regions, if not the region's largest farmer's market, am I correct? We're the largest farmer's market in the region and it's real important to know that we are year round as well, which is yes. pretty unusual. Um, so, and, and I also don't want to confuse anyone. You can get fresh produce at city markets seven days a week because we have those specialty grocers, produce stands, a bakery, a butcher shop. But on the weekends, right, we have the farmer's market, Saturdays and Sundays. This weekend, we are basically back to normal, everyone. Ooh. For a while, we were limited to confetti. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. Um, the only thing that you won't see just yet is City Flea, which is our flea market kind of vendors that happen on Sundays. Um, okay. We are postponing them a little bit so that mm -hmm. we can create room to spread out through the market, um, again, to facilitate social distancing and keep it all you know, safe shopping. But yeah, all the, all the vendors that you know and love, the artists and crafters are coming back. Um, we also have buskers. We're not going to place them in the high traffic areas. You know, the performers, I call them, we mm -hmm. call them performers. Um, yep. Some of the ones that draw the big crowds, like the magicians and so forth, we're going to kind of hold off on those guys, but you'll still have that same atmosphere with music and, and all. We are requiring our vendors to wear face coverings, mm -hmm. farmers market vendors. The businesses do their own thing, and for the most part, they are as well. But the farmer's market vendors will be wearing face coverings when they are dealing with customers. You may not see them wearing them when they're unloading trucks and what have you, because you know that's kind of hard to do, but mm -hmm. um, they are doing that. So, we, you know, we're hoping everybody will kind of reciprocate that as well. Oh, absolutely. So people, people visiting the market are, are certainly and absolutely encouraged to to wear their own masks. Yeah, and just practice, you know, every, we know, we know the drill. And you can see on the screen, our signage, we have the markets. Mm -hmm. It's a walk-through market. There's some other markets in town that are doing drive-through and that sort of thing. This is a walk-up market like we've always been, but we do have kind of a, a traffic pattern now. So we have one way, you know, everybody's kind of looking for those arrows on the ground, mm -hmm. and the banners to kind of see what direction to go. 
we have the vendors spread out, that sort of thing. So yeah, just use common sense and courtesy, right? Common sense and courtesy. I mean, just <laughs> the antidote to everything, right? Yeah. It just yeah. makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Well, and oh, yes, I can't wait yeah, to get the flower. Down. I get a lot of questions. Will you have cut flowers? Oh, yes, we've got cut flowers rocking. You know, interestingly, our um, we have all the gardening uh, and bedding plants, vegetable plants, herbs, all that. You know, it's really kind of popular right now to start a garden at home. So you can come get all those items as well. And we are doing our um, little cart rentals. We, we call it the veggie valet. Oh, yep. One of the little wheelie carts. Um, we are doing those. And another big headline for this weekend is that we're mm -hmm. kicking off our Double Up Food Bucks program, which is our seasonal matching program. So if you're a SNAP benefit recipient, which Right now, within this whole, you know, scene with lot high unemployment and that sort of thing, people are really, you know, food insecure. Yes. So if you are a SNAP benefit recipient, you can actually get a dollar for dollar match on your SNAP benefit up to $15 per visit. Not wow. But per visit. So you could walk away with 30 bucks worth of produce each day in a weekend and that will really, really make a difference in your bottom line. So that is that. tremendous. And I, gosh, I mean, just fresh food, you know, more important than ever. I, I just, I, myself, I've been just craving fruits and veggies, especially as the temps warm up a little bit and, and how wonderful to be there and support local farmers. And then also, you know, take care of yourselves and your families. So, yeah, so you know, our our, uh, our produce guys, I have to throw this in, thanks to Donna from the streetcar helping us kind of facilitate this. We um, are doing a weekly donation at the Crossroads Community Kitchen. So we pull up with a carload full of fresh produce, which is hard to get, and they're running on donation only. So City Market's kind of helping everyone get some fresh, colorful food in their diets right now. That is so awesome. And I know we're, we're planning to have more on that uh, Crossroads Community Kitchen initiative coming up in a future episode. So definitely something to talk about. And Sue, wanted to throw a question from the audience your way real quick. Can you remind us of those farmer, farmer's market hours? Oh, yes. And if, if, if this slips your mind, you can always go to our website or our Facebook mm -hmm. the website is thecitymarketkc.org mm -hmm. or the city market. Org. I have it kind of in both. But anyway, um, Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Sundays, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's just the farmer's market, guys. Everything else is open past the 3 p.m., you know, so yep. you can still have restaurants and so, you know, go to restaurants and shops and after the farmer's market. A lot of times when they pack up and leave, people think we're completely closed. We're not. Right. Absolutely. And this is another, another milestone happening this weekend, Sue. Tell us we are going to see something really eye-catching yeah. when we visit, the next time we visit the farmer's market or the city market neighborhood. Uh, tell us what's going on. So, so check with the chat and see who is right. Where is this? Does anyone know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it knows. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we got one <laughs> right on Jared. So goes, Jared knows. the city market now has this really awesome, we call it a photo op monument. Um, this is larger than life. You have to go see it in person to really get the picture. And it's cool because if, if you're at the right angle, the skyline outlines it, frames it just perfectly. So it'll make really great photographs for tourists and even for locals. Um, so this is on the third and Walnut end of the city market. So mm -hmm. traditionally you would drive in from fifth and Walnut and then go kind of through a crazy mousetrap and come out the other end at right. third and Walnut. Crazy mousetrap, yes. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and yeah, you know, it was really hard on people who were not locals and knew about this. So now it's new and improved. It's it's open to traffic as or to vehicular traffic as of next week. We're putting the finishing touches on it right now. But Walnut is now going to be a two-way street straight through the market. Straight shot. For the first time since the 80s, yeah. did you tell me? 
Yeah, yep. we've been closed since the 80s. So it, or we, we, that street was closed since yeah. the 80s. But yeah, so it's going to be way more convenient for mm -hmm. people. It's going to connect both sides of the river market because that was mm -hmm. kind of a weird dead end. Um, so yeah, on the front end, or now I see I have to even change my mindset on the Fifth Street side because there's no back door anymore. So on the Fifth Street side, we have the City Market Arch sign. Mm -hmm. The old historic city market. And now on the third street side, we have this really cool monument. It's kind of hip, kind of new and fresh. So love old, it. New. I mean, it's just so city market, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Sue, we're going to wrap up here pretty quick, but just, uh, just a reminder, I know you dropped the website link, but uh, Facebook, correct, is a good spot also to get updated on city market events which aren't happening as regularly as they might normally but there are some things coming up like a blood drive on the 26th right and we are doing some virtual things and we do mm -hmm. plan on starting and we'll probably have a dedication for walnut street and so forth a little later in the summer we're still playing it by ear okay. our facebook is at the city market kansas city and you'll know it's us there's a few out there You'll know it's us because it's the city market logo on a white background in the profile pic. You'll, awesome. You'll know when you're on it. Well, Sue, thank you so much. Congratulations on what I know will be a tremendous weekend. And thanks for helping us kick off the downtown dish today. This is a great show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, here's another scoop for you. So speaking of Hawthorne 109 and some of the boutiques doing uh, uh, shopping by personal appointment, Houndstooth, one of my favorite menswear boutiques in Kansas City, Houndstooth is now open again by appointment. Word on the street is they're having a big sale. So, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just saying now would be a good time to shop. So head to their website, houndstoothkc.com, make your appointment. I know Jeff is keeping the store um, clean and sanitized and giving you that wonderful personal experience. So definitely a good time to check them out. I am so thrilled to welcome our second guest, uh, a place that I think some of you out there know how much I love, Tannen Wine Bar and Kitchen. Barry Tunnel, General Manager of Tannen, welcome to the Downtown Dish. Hi, Katie. Thank you so much for having me uh, on the show. I'm really excited to be here. We are so excited and just love what you guys are doing, but want to kind of take a step back, Barry, and have you, you know, level set for us a little bit because when we've talked before, and I know for me personally, when I think of Tannen, I think a lot of great things, but I think those special events, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, you know, work accomplishments, uh, send-offs and I'm curious how you all have adapted to that challenge of kind of embodying that that monumental personal experience when you can't necessarily have people in the restaurant at this exact moment absolutely and you know I think um, you know this crisis has really hit our industry probably um, harder than than almost any other industry um, out there I, when we think about what Tannen Wine Bar is. Obviously, great food and wine are a big part of it, but being a, a comfortable place for people from across the community to come, um, we, we try to be as inclusive and, and as kind of big tent as possible. We want people from all over the city and all over the country and even the world um, coming to Tannen to enjoy our atmosphere, our staff. Um, and unfortunately, right now, we, we can't do that. So you mentioned, um, you know, how some of the uh, uh, city market businesses have been adapting over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, Tannen has been very focused on, on uh, adapting. Um, so you mentioned special events like birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. And I think uh, it's been so much fun to work with some of our, our guests who are getting really, really creative uh, with, um, their celebrations they might mm -hmm. uh, we've had guests that have purchased um you know food and wine pairings with um, maybe uh, a few different bottles that they distribute to friends or family and then they all jump on a uh, a zoom chat and, and taste the wines together uh like and that that that, be that becomes the the birthday celebration um you know we also try to, to bring people together in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. um you know 
we, we want to offer a little bit of everything. Um, so, um, you know, in, in addition to offering, you know, food, beer, wine, and to-go cocktails right now, uh, we also try to create some special events and wine dinners for people to participate in um, via Zoom. And I love that. And, and I know I personally have just fully embraced the concept of the Zoom happy hour. Um, we're not going to discuss the size of my uh, recycling, my glass recycling pile, but let's just say I've been drinking a lot of wine. Um, here. <laughs> and from Canon as well. Um, but Barry, you said something really interesting to me the other day, and, it, and it, I, I never would have thought about it, but as challenging as it's been to adapt recently, you found some benefits to carrying some of these events like the wine tastings and the wine dinners over to Zoom. What have you found as the host and as the planner of these events that's actually been a little bit of a silver lining? Well, you know, if you would have told me three months ago that we were going to have um, wine dinner events and wine tastings via Zoom, I would have said, I, I have no interest. It's not what I want to do. It's not what we're about. Um, but being forced to, to um, adapt and being forced to, to really get creative with these um, has turned out to be a lot of fun. And um, number one, the support that we've had from, from our friends and regulars and mm -hmm. uh, um, the kind of extended team and family has just been phenomenal for, for everything that we've tried. It's, it's really um, either sold out or, or uh, been much more successful than we, than we anticipated. Um, but some really unique things have kind of, kind of come to, to um, fruition with the Zoom dinners in particular. One is that um, the, we're hosting winemakers live from their wineries. And so um, we're able to take 40, 50, 60 guests, you know, on a virtual tour of a winery in California or really anywhere around the world. Um, some of the, uh, you know, some of the time zones are a little bit challenging. So right. we focus. <laughs> a lot more on producers that are released within the United States. So we're not uh, um, interrupting uh, winemakers in, in the middle of the night in, in Europe and other places. Um, but we're going to expand those hours too. So we may offer more, you know, Saturday uh, tastings at noon when it's seven or eight o'clock in Europe and those producers can actually um, enjoy the wines as well. That's fantastic. And I got to see firsthand in person yesterday, your incredible carry out operation. So I want you, if you don't mind, just touching briefly on that because um, ordering ahead with the menu and a, a tremendous announcement there and that uh, happened right before the the closings, if I remember correctly, that, that Chef Aaron, the original chef, came back to Tannen. Yeah, we're really happy to have Chef Brian back, Brian Aaron. Um, he was was with us uh, actually way back into the JP Wine Bar days. Uh, he joined the team uh, back in 2009, mm -hmm. um, and um, he, he left in 2016 and has worked in a number of great restaurants around town. I think most recently he was the executive chef over at Pot Pie in Westport. Um, oh, awesome. We're really, really happy to have him back. Uh, so he came back and joined us in February. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's, he's doing phenomenal food. Um, if there's a silver lining, you know, in um, having to shut down dining operations, it's that he'll have a chance to really put together the menu that he wants to release when it's when it's time, rather than transitioning um, uh, gra more gradually into um, into newer dishes. Um, he's also been phenomenal for you know the um, wine dinner, the Zoom wine dinner events that we've we've done. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a food pairing component and. Um, you know, once again, I hate to say that I was a skeptic to start, but I didn't think that a heat at home food pairing was going to be that appealing to people. Right. But people responded phenomenally to it both um, when they're placing the orders, but also we get messages and, and uh, emails and phone calls after the events where people want to continue the conversation and just tell us how good the foods turned out. Um, and... Um, you know, he, his, his talent for, for being able to make great food that you can reheat at home has, has been phenomenal, uh, in addition to doing some really creative things with our uh, our day-to-day -day menu. Um, well, and again, thanks to him for bringing back my all-time favorite hot crab dip. I love how many people are in the chat right now talking about what they love to eat at Tannin. I got to give a shout out to Jen. Uh, 
the fudge stuffed peanut butter cookies with a little Prosecco. Perfect pairing. I had some cookies last night, by the way. Yeah, I did. Terrific. Um, but Barry, so real quick for, for everybody, and again, um, to, the, to everyone who's with us, these are the types of links and information that we're going to include in that blog that'll go up later today. But Barry, I believe that you have the, the online ordering and the carryout set up through Talk. Is that correct? Absolutely. And uh, Talk is a great platform. You can use their app. You can also go directly to our website, tnnkc.com or tnnwinebar.com. Mm -hmm. um, it'll link you right up to the menu and, and you can order online. You can order food. We've put in some wine pairing ideas um, with the food. So if, uh, if you're looking for suggestions for, for food and wine that uh, will work well together, um, there's bottled cocktails um, available to order um, through, through the app um, and really just trying, trying to offer all the things uh, uh, that, uh, that we're able to offer in-house um, uh, that will work well in a to-go package as well. And that's uh, something, Barry, thank you so much. Um, this has been tremendous. Thank you for representing Tannen. It was, oh, it just made my heart burst to see you guys yesterday when I was picking up my order. So. You'll see me again, and, and hopefully you'll see lots of our friends uh, from this show today Terrific. stopping by very soon. Yeah, place your order online, or you can just walk up. With, we, we figure if we can't have a big tent in the building, we'll put a tent on the, on the sidewalk, and people right. can walk up and get their uh, food and drinks on, on the sidewalk. So I love you that. So like, for me, Katie. You know, when I was there yesterday picking up my food, and I just did that little impulse cocktail purchase. Oh, and quick note, cocktails. So I love this, Barry. When you buy a a pre-made cocktail from Tannin, bring back your jar, and then you get a little money off your next cocktail, uh, correct? Uh, every time you bring back the uh, the glass container, we'll give you $2 off your next cocktail, so. Okay, so you'll, yeah, you'll definitely see me next week, so. Thank you so much, Barry. Thank you, Katie. And that's something that I wanted to mention, too, because you know, I know that, that we're all focused on downtown. I'm sure many people on this call live downtown, but I know a lot of us work downtown or just love spending time downtown. I myself am in Brookside now and I love it, but I go downtown as much as I can. And shout out to all of the restaurateurs who are doing a tremendous job of packaging their food um, so that it can uh, easily withstand some of, you know, a little longer travel time, maybe to get home. Um, to Barry's point, a lot of their options, you can actually heat when you get home. So freshness is not a concern. Um, I actually took food home uh, from another establishment yesterday. It was Cluster Truck. I love Cluster Truck. Um, and it made it to Brookside beautifully. We dove right in when I got home. Food still warm, still delicious. So I know that is can be a big hurdle in terms of packaging and things like that. So kudos to everybody. And remember too, that all of our guests today, what's cool about them is that they're near the streetcar and the streetcar is up and running. You know, it is. I've waved yesterday, saw them drive, cruising by, driving by, cruising by, but Tannen is right by the Kaufman Center stop. So, you know, what I would maybe do is, is, if you are driving downtown, or actually I would encourage you to take transit and then maybe take the bus and then hop on the streetcar, take a little ride, take a little walk downtown, take some pictures, soak everything in, get some food, maybe do a little shopping, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you know, things, are, things aren't quite back to normal, but I think that we've got some really exciting things happening in the neighborhood, and that's what we want to focus on. And what I would encourage you to do is when you're kind of out and about making your own little adventure, check out this slide, Boulevard Brewing Company, the wonderful people there, of course, they are just as focused on helping other people throughout this time as they always are. They have a super cool curbside carryout bingo card, boulevard.com slash bingo. You can see there are all kinds of delicious downtown and uh, downtown adjacent restaurants mark those off as you order and eat from those establishments and when you get a bingo you can then turn that card back in and get a little swag so i mean it's just your just your checklist right there you know some of some of the most delicious food available so thanks to boulevard for that and speaking of local restaurants 
and options and carry out and curbside. I am so excited that Danielle Lehman is here with us, the founder of curbsidekc.com. You may also know her from the Open Belly podcast, which is just a tremendous source of stories and information related to the restaurant scene. So Danielle, welcome to the Downtown Dish. Thank you for having me. So excited you're here. Me too. So I know that you are, you keep busy all the time, but you have been a force during these last few weeks. You have been doing so many things to help out lots of businesses, but especially restaurants. And that started, I believe, with curbsidekc.com. So tell us how you decided to launch this website. Yeah, so um, my day job is doing marketing consulting um, for businesses in a lot of different industries, but I do work with a lot of restaurants and have a lot of friends who own restaurants or chefs in restaurants. And as um, you know, the pandemic started kind of evolving and we were hearing rumors of having stay at home orders. A lot of restaurant owners and chefs started asking me, you know, do I, you know, do I think it's a good idea that they should be doing curbside takeout? How should they communicate that to their customers? And there was just this period of time that was really rapidly changing. And I mean, still everything is changing so rapidly, but there wasn't a really easy way to find out who was still open, who was doing takeout, who was doing curbside takeout, who was now offering delivery on a number of different platforms. Um, so I spent a couple of hours, um, one Saturday morning early on to, to set up this database using an air table and a simple Squarespace site, just try to keep it really simple. Um, I added about 25 restaurants that I knew of who are now offering curbside takeout and kind of sent it out into the world. Um, there's a way that restaurants can add their business as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, we now have over 1200 restaurants. Wow. On the database. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, and it went viral really quickly. The first week we had over a hundred thousand unique visitors on the site. So it was crazy how it just kind of started as a really simple idea, but evolved into a really, um, well, like highly utilized resource in the community to find out who was offering curbside takeout. And, and then now on the slide, you can see we have curated collections too. The database is so huge. I felt like it was really challenging for people to kind of answer the question of what should we have for dinner? Um, Mm -hmm. So we've been working with um, a number of food influencers and critics in Kansas City to help curate some really nice lists on the homepage too. I mean, does anybody else just, is that maybe like the most agonizing question you can consider (laughs) is what's for dinner? It's just, it's an uphill battle for me every day, (laughs) every day, what's for dinner? Well, and what I love about this, Danielle, is it is so usable. Like when you, right when you log into the site, curbsidekc.com, you'll see there you can immediately go to food or liquor options. And then from there, you can sort by all kinds of categories, neighborhood, uh, type of cuisine, et cetera. But I wonder too, so you mentioned that restaurants can hop in and they can add their business. And, and obviously we've had, uh, you know, just as you said, just evolving requirements, evolving conditions the last few weeks. Has it been a challenge to continually adapt this site to keep pace with what's going on? Um, You know, the challenge really is just getting that information from the restaurant owners. So Mm -hmm. when they're making changes, um, you know, we send out probably weekly emails to remind people to let us know if something has changed. And it's really simple to update their information if they remember to do it. Um, Mm -hmm. We were hearing from some users that some places had actually closed that were still on the list and the, the owners, you know, the last thing on their mind is to remember to let me know to check right. the listing. So right. we have, um, we have about 30 people who volunteered to go through and scrub all of the data. Um, so it's been updated fairly recently and we will continually monitor that. Um, users can also report if something's changed as well. So it's kind of a community effort to, to keep it up to date. Um, but most of the restaurant owners have been really good about letting us know what has changed. And then we update it usually the same day. Danielle, we had a question come in from the audience and I think this is a great one. And I'm sure again, things just are changing rapidly, but any thoughts right now on how long curbside KC will continue as a service? So I actually think that this will probably be something that we see for a while. Um, 
first of all, as a mom of a three-year-old, I wish that every restaurant would always do curbside because right. getting them in and out of a car seat is a pain. And this has really opened up so many options for us to get takeout, honestly, selfishly. Right. Um, but I do think, you know, even though dining rooms are starting to reopen, a lot of consumers will still feel most comfortable, uh, you know, just getting takeout and, and still quarantining at some capacity. Yes. Um, so I think it'll be around, you know, indefinitely and will continue to evolve the platform based on what's happening. So it's hard for me to say what's going to be happening six months from now, but I think the platform will probably still be useful until we can completely reopen society and go back to normal, I guess. Absolutely. And speaking of all these great restaurants, I am so thrilled that you agreed to do this. So Danielle has picked a few of her favorite downtown carryout options. I'm glad that everybody is theoretically eating right now, because if you weren't, you're going to get real hungry right about now. So Danielle, take us, for, take us through these first three recommendations. Yeah, I pulled out some of my favorites that we've either been frequenting a lot or that are doing something super interesting right now. So um, starting with Antler Room, what I love about Antler Room is that they've continued to be open for curbside takeout and they've adapted their menu to sa mostly sandwiches and side mm -hmm. salads. Um, so, uh, you know, what was at one point a special occasion um, dinner has now become much more accessible for a lot of people. And they've also been partnering with Heart Barbecue, who used to pop up out of Crane Brewing. And if you ever went to any of the uh, pop-ups for Heart Barbecue, you would know that you need to wait in line for 45 minutes and they sell out really quickly. It's really hard to get your hands on some Heart Barbecue. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now on Fridays and Saturdays, he's collaborating with them to do sandwiches and also racks of ribs. And you can order those in advance on their talk account. Um, so it's just, I mean, it's fun to see different uh, chefs come together and collaborate in a new and interesting way during this time. Absolutely. Um, the second one on the list is Happy Gillis. So what I think they're doing that's particularly interesting is they've been doing these home deliveries um, with prepared food. And I think the menu changes every week. They're doing home mm -hmm. deliveries on Fridays. I think you have to order by Thursday. Um, this week they had these enchiladas that you see here. Um, they also oh, had, good. Um, yeah, so those are prepared. I think they're probably heat and serve, but they're completely prepared. Mm -hmm. um, but they are also doing some cook at home kits. So I think this week was breakfast tacos. They send you the eggs and the sausage and whatever else comes in the kit for you to make it at home. Um, but they're also delivering just essentials that you could get at the grocery store. So eggs, milk, toilet paper, alcohol, um, they're just kind of delivering that all directly to your door. So if you're trying to avoid the supermarket or at least space out your visits, um, mm -hmm. that that's a good option to get some of those essentials delivered to you. Awesome. Um, the third one on this slide is Pollo. Um, they are on Southwest Boulevard. They do mm -hmm. smoked chicken and their ribs are actually really good. And then they have these really interesting side dishes, um, Chef Carlos Mortera. So actually Pollo is owned by uh, father and son. So Carlos Jr. is the owner and chef at um, The Bite. Mm -hmm. Am I spacing on the name of <laughs> The Bite? Yeah. In City Market. Um, and then his dad, Carlos Sr., kind of leads operations at Pollo. But um, Carlos Jr. grew up working in a Korean restaurant. So a lot of his food is kind of has a Korean influence on it. Mm -hmm. So they have, they have several side dishes that I think are really standouts at Pollo. So they're uh, charred broccoli. They have a kimchi fried rice. They have the elotes. Um, you can see the chicken and the beans, but the standout thing on their menu for me is all of their hot sauces. So just order extra of all the hot sauces and go to town. It's, it's a really easy place to get takeout and it's super delicious and fairly healthy. Yeah. T totally. Yeah. Totally healthy. I love it. I love them so much. And Danielle, thank you for, uh, for mentioning. So Pueyo is on Southwest Boulevard. Um, they're near 22nd street. If I am correct, uh, not far at all from Boulevard. That's right. Yep. And then Happy Gillis, our friends at Happy Gillis over in Columbus park, mm -hmm. uh, adjacent to the river market and then antler room, uh, just South of the kind of downtown, KC proper over closer to uh, Union Hill. That's right. Yep. And so Antler Room's doing curbside pickup. Happy Gillis is doing home delivery and Pollo is doing curbside as well. And I believe, and I don't want to misstate, but the last time I checked anyway, it didn't seem like Happy Gillis had a lot of constraints 
on that delivery area, which I thought was really cool also. Yeah, it seems like they're, you know, delivering pretty far outside of the downtown area. I'm not exactly sure the radius, but uh, it's definitely worth checking if you don't live downtown. And here are a couple more and oh, yeah, we're all <laughs> hungry now. Talk to us, girl. What do we got? So Casey Pinoy on the left is one of my favorite restaurants in town. It's a Filipino restaurant that's been around. It started as a food truck. It's been around for a little over a year now at their brick and mortar. Um, the chef, uh, Chrissy Newcomb, is incredible. Um, she was one of the restaurants that closed down pretty early, has not been offering any curbside takeout or delivery at all. Um, but she recently started doing home deliveries on Friday as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so she has a pretty limited family style menu. You have until Thursday to order and they deliver today. We actually just got a delivery a little bit ago um, awesome. for dinner tonight. Yay! Um, I, yeah, I can't wait. Um, I think she is actually going to be transitioning now to curbside takeout starting Memorial Day weekend, so next weekend. Um, and I think she might even be utilizing the space next to the restaurant, which is kind of a gravel parking lot, to do some more kind of grilled Filipino style meats like chicken and a sal, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really exciting that she's able to kind of shift her menu to kind of work for more of a curbside takeout model. Mm -hmm. And she is apparently bringing CSIG back on the menu, which has not been available for home delivery. And CSIG is my favorite dish of any restaurant in Kansas City. It's well, like a, <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So it's pork shoulder and pork ear kind of diced up in a fajita skillet. Um, with vinegar and peppers and lime calamansi or lime juice um, and then it has a cracked egg on top that cooks in the skillet and you kind of mix it all up and you serve with garlic fried rice so that's going to be back oh. on the and this is something super cool so Danielle you already mentioned Casey Pin Pinoy started as a food truck here's what we love about downtown they started as a city market food truck yes so see we're all coming together working together and then we're branching out and we're growing together I love that. And I cannot wait for you to talk about ravenous because I love a burger. So um, another example of a restaurant that I think it's cool that you can have a more accessible price point right now is Corvino. Um, mm -hmm. Their ravenous concept is really what they've been focusing on for, for takeout. They do not do curbside, but it's contactless. So you walk into the restaurant, it, your bag is waiting for you on the table. They text you when it's ready. Um, so it's super simple. Um, they, I'd actually never tried this before, but they have a, uh, until yesterday, they have a Big Mike on the menu, which is their take on a Big Mac, but Chef Michael Corvino has crafted it using higher quality ingredients. Um, I mean, it's a James Beard nominated Big Mac is what it is. So, uh, and their tots with their cheese aioli, their strawberry rhubarb pan pies. I mean, I could just eat there. Oh. It's so good. Man. All right. I got my whole weekend cut out for me. Danielle, <laughs> quick question. I know we're running out of time and I do want to say if anybody else has any last minute questions, go ahead and throw them our way in the chat. We're keeping an eye out there. Um, I'm going to pop this back up. So hopefully you'll remember to join us next week and, and every week for the foreseeable future. But Danielle, a question for you real quick. Have you heard the scoop on if anybody's planning to uh, experiment with some more sidewalk seating or outdoor seating options? Yeah, I don't know specifically who is going to be doing this, but I know neighborhoods like Westport are exploring what it looks like to close down some streets and offer more um, patio seating. So I think if that is successful, I'm sure other parts of the city will follow suit and restaurants will, will try to get creative in being able to serve alcohol on a patio and get kind of a temporary patio permit. Um, so I, I'm optimistic that the city will be able to help work with those restaurants to find a way to make that happen. Absolutely. And let me give one final question. I appreciate you guys. We really are trying to be conscientious on time here. So I uh, appreciate you joining us. But question for actually all three of our panelists today. Do you have any quick tips, um, either from your firsthand experience or, or what you've heard about how people who maybe are a little hesitant to kind of ease back into those in-person experiences as we see more restaurants kind of start to gradually open maybe with some limited capacity to start but any any tips to help people maybe just feel a little more comfortable while they're they're going out and supporting businesses um oh yeah go ahead <laughs> uh danielle kick us off okay sure um i would say my advice is just 
you have to make a decision for yourself and for your family, what you feel comfortable with. But a lot of restaurants are approaching it in different ways. You know, some are only doing outdoor seating. Some are doing really limited capacity inside the restaurant as well. So I think um, the, the most important thing is to just kind of educate yourself before you visit and find out what exactly that restaurant is doing. And if you feel comfortable with that, um, obviously that's your, your decision if you want to support them in that way. But if you don't feel comfortable going out, I do think it's still really important to support restaurants by getting takeout and delivery as much as possible. And Barry, any thoughts from that, from that firsthand uh, management yeah. perspective? So, you know, obviously, um, you know, we, we definitely have priorities as a business, but our first priority is the safety of our, set, our staff and our, our guests. Um, for that reason, we're going to stick to to go um, uh, for now. However, um, you know what we know is that um, that um, it's a lot of airborne transmission, which may not be as much of an issue outside. So we're really exploring sidewalk options, parking lot permit options, um, just more opportunities for people to dine outside. And, and what, one thing that we really want to emphasize for our guests is for those guests that are, that are comfortable dining outside, we want to have that as an option. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ultimately guests may prefer to, to dine inside, but we always want to retain that option of having people, having the opportunity for our guests to enjoy um, our sidewalk and possibly expand beyond that. And Sue, I mean, great question for you as well, because you've got, you know, mix of, of food-based businesses and then also retailers. Any tips, especially maybe as people are coming back to the, the farmer's market about kind of feeling a little more comfortable? Mm -hmm. We, you know, I do, we got our hands full. We have more than 30 shops and restaurants. So right. really we're working case by case, helping facilitate our restaurants. You know, there are small ma and pa shops. They're figuring it out as they go. And we are in the background trying to help them with whatever they need. And we are exploring some options. I don't have anything solid yet, but you know, we have a lot of common area space that during when the farmer's market isn't happening, it, there's a lot of space, there's a lot of elbow room. So we're trying to figure out how to utilize that and grant it to our uh, restaurants so that customers can spread out stuff. So we're looking at all our options and adapting as we go. Wonderful. And Danielle, I'm going to throw one last question to you and then we're going to close it out for today. Is there anyone that is opening for dine-in service this weekend that you're particularly excited about? You know, to be totally honest, I'm not even sure exactly who is reopening yet in the downtown area. Um, I've been getting some input from restaurant owners in the area, but most people I've heard are still kind of limiting, you know, in in-person dining as much as possible. So I'll have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> well, and to that point, we have another great resource. Again, this will be linked in our blog, but the downtown council site, downtownkc.org slash open is a wonderful up-to-date list of all downtown businesses. So not just food related, but of course we've got so many of those wonderful restaurants, but that's a great resource. Maybe you want to bookmark that in addition to curbsidekc.com. Um, and that's going to be updated continually, you know, again, as things change and, and services evolve. So wonderful resource there. But I want to thank everyone, Danielle, Sue, Barry, thank you so much for joining us. And all of you, what a great crowd for our first episode. Again, we'll be here every Friday at noon. Uh, we'll put that blog up. And if you have more questions or feedback, things you want to see on the show, get on social, use that hashtag downtown dish KC. You know, I'm always online, so I will see it. And if we can, we'll make it happen. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a good weekend and happy eating. Thank you.